Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to day five of official Omicap previews. And we have a lot of cards to look at again today, so we're going to jump right in with the card that you see on the screen now. That's Angel Sanctions. This is a Mythic, two white and three. It's an Angel, three, four, flying. When this enters the battlefield, you may exile a target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Angel of Sanctions leaves the battlefield. Now let's talk about Limited first with this card. If you're lucky enough to open this, it is Mythic, you won't see it all the time. But this is an incredibly swingy card. This can really help you take control of a board state. For 5 mana, you get a 3-4 flyer, and you get to exile your opponent's best non-land permanent at the time. That's pretty amazing. And it's not creature notice. It's non-land permanent. Very, very versatile card. And if something does happen to it, you get another shot at it with the embalmed cost of white and 5. Pretty awesome. And at that point, maybe you go ahead and exile something different if your opponent has something better at that time or else you can hit the same thing again if you need to. But this card will do serious work, definitely in draft or sealed. Beyond that, though, I think there's one big stumbling block for this card in standard, and that's the fact that there's a lot of competition at that five casting cost spot in white. And you have to ask yourself, are you going to play this over Archangel Avison? Mm, I don't know if I would. I, I think it'd be very hard to justify that. Now, having said that, there could be situations that come up in future metagames where there's some cards that don't have a lot of answers to them, and this card all of a sudden becomes a lot better, and it could kind of move in and out of standard occasionally, or eventually, of course, when Archangel Avacyn rotates out, maybe this one gets more of a shot. But I think at least right now, it's going to be hard to justify running this over her in most standard decks. Beyond that, though, it's still a really awesome limited card. It's going to be a lot of fun in angel-centric decks and like Commander and stuff like that. And another side note, it is actually a male angel. You don't see that a whole lot in Magic. I think it speaks to the fact that in this plane, in Amonkhet, there is something strange going on with the power of Bolas. Maybe he's created these angels or something like that. So I'm interested to kind of hear lore-wise where that comes from. All right, our next card comes to us from a Spanish language spoiler. It's Approach of the Second Sun. It's a white and six sorcery, and if this was cast from your hand, and you cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. If not, you gain seven life and put Approach of the Second Sun back into your library as the seventh card from the top. Now, first off, I would say this card probably should be a mythic with all the text on it, <laughs> but it is a rare. Apparently, they do want this to show up at least in a little more frequency than mythic in the limited game. And you can only have one of these and still get the win condition because you can play it the first time and cast it. It goes back into your deck and then hopefully you draw it again and you get to play it a second time and win the game. That's the concept here. The question is, how difficult is that to do? You have to find the card, then you have to cast it twice. It doesn't sound like a lot, especially if you have some support cards around it, but these type of win conditions do have a lot of high variance around them. So for limited, do I see myself playing it if I opened it? Mm, a lot of decks I probably would. Like, why not throw it in there? I'm not crazy about just gaining 7 life and not winning the game, but it does buy you a little more time to try to orchestrate something to give this second cast off, right? So I find it intriguing enough that I see myself wanting to make it work, even if maybe it might not be the best plan out of my pool, but I can see myself trying to make it work. I think at times it will win a game out of nowhere, and those times will be amazing when you're playing those games in limited. Now, as far as standard goes with this card, we currently live in a world with a very streamlined Actually, very efficient standard. Not a lot of diversity, <laughs> but some very efficient decks with Mardu Vehicles and Four Color Sahili. And you have to ask yourself, do you think this combo has the chance to hang in that environment? And I can't say definitively yes or no at this point, because we haven't seen the full set of Amonkhet, and there could be more support cards that really help you pull something like this off. But at least right now, with what I have at my disposal to look at, I don't really feel like this could potentially hang in that environment. Now, you could try to brew something with like four of these and a strong control shell to protect the combo, but then you have to ask yourself, is that going to be good against Mardu Vehicles, which is already a difficult deck to beat when you're in four-color Sahili at times, which is kind of trying to do the same thing. <laughs> and the second question is, if I'm doing that, do I just want to play Four Color Sahili? Because that combo is probably actually easier to put together than this combo. And even though it's the same card, it kind of amounts to a two-card combo, but this one costs seven to cast each part of it. So I don't know. I would like to see somebody brew something with this and make it work, because I think that'd be amazing. But at least in this current standard, with the cards we've seen so far, I don't know if it can quite get there. 
I hope someone proves me wrong because I think it's really awesome and it could be an amazing deck to see unfold at some point in the meta and maybe we'll get there sometime before it leaves the meta. That would be really awesome. Um, but at least right now, I think that's what it is. As far as Commander goes, though, I would try this out in Commander. I mean, it's just one card in your 100-card deck. It's not going to come up all the time. This isn't going to be like your win condition in that deck. But just as a one-off sort of fun thing to pull off occasionally, might be fun to play around with. All right, let's look at a couple limited commons for white. We have Wing Shepherd and Supply Caravan. Wing Shepherd, another male angel, one white and five. It's an angel, Flying Vigilance, three, three. You can cycle it away for one white. Decent limited card. I'd be happy to play one of these in limited. What's nice is a three, three flyer with Vigilance for six is going to be good for you in limited. And if you get it early on, like maybe your first draw and you really need that land or something like that, you can cycle it away, try to hit that land. Secondly, Supply Caravan, a white and four. It's a camel, three, five when this enters the battlefield. If you control a tapped creature, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. So again, it's another card that's trying to maybe mitigate the setback of Exert a little bit. So if you did Exert a creature, you can go ahead and play this and you get an extra 1-1 one, one white warrior token with Vigilance out of it. And you're getting yourself at that point 4-6 power toughness for 5 on the battlefield. It's actually not that bad. Now, none of it has evasion, which in the later portions of a limited game... It might not be that great, but it's also a very good blocker if you're playing a more controlling, methodical deck. So I don't see this always making your cut, but it's definitely a card that you will want to put into some limited decks in white. Uh, also, too, I mean, just simply attacking in in a more aggressive style deck and then playing this on your second main phase will also get you the benefit. So it has that type of versatility built in, too. All right, let's move on to blue. And before we get into the new cards, I just wanted to show you the invocation for Kefnet the Mindful. They premiered this today, and it kind of ties in with the next card a little bit. New Perspectives. A blue and five enchantment. This is a rare. When this enters the battlefield, you draw three cards. As long as you have seven or more cards in hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. This is actually a really awesome card in Limited. Happy to pay six to draw three cards. Like that's enough to restock your hand and give you what you need to hopefully put away a game a lot of times. Awesome, awesome card there. As far as standard goes, a couple questions I have about this card. First off, are we going to see more pieces that will help us create a full-on true cycling deck, maybe in Azorius Colors or something like that? We've seen a few pieces. I hope we get more. We still have like half the set to see, so... I'm holding out that we're going to see enough pieces where this potentially could be standard playable. Another thing you could think about brewing with this card is maybe using this as an enabler for the blue god because it's going to help you keep your hand stocked. That is important if you want that card to attack or block. But again, we saw some other decent blue win conditions so far in the set, so maybe that becomes a little extraneous. Hard to say at this point. So it's a little early to tell with a card like this. I'd really like to see what other cards in the set. Could see some standard play in a couple different scenarios potentially, though. But if not, still great and limited. And it also could be really good in Commander, too, I think, especially if you have a cycling theme going on. Cruel Reality. This one's a mythic. It's two black and five. It's a curse or a curse. Enchant player. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. If the player can't, he or she loses five life. I think the main thing holding this card back from standard is its casting cost. Secondly, it's a little high variance if you're going up against a token deck or something like that. This isn't going to be super good for you. As far as limited goes, most of the time I think it will be good. It's a tad expensive at seven, but you can definitely get there and limited, especially sealed games, as long as, again, you're not up against some sort of super strong token and bomb strategy because that could get real annoying real quick and you won't feel like you're getting your money's worth for seven man at that point, right? <laughs> So for limited, I wouldn't necessarily say don't main deck it, but a lot of times it could come out of your sideboard into play. I don't really see it getting through in standard, but it could be fun in commander, assuming you don't have all friends that play token strategies. <laughs> as long as somebody sitting at the table isn't on that strategy, could actually be pretty decent there. All right, let's move on to red. We have Hazaret's Favor. It's a red and two enchantment. This one's a rare. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature you control get plus two, plus O, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. If you do, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this card falls a little short for me. We've seen a lot of great red aggro cards so far in the set. I mean, some amazing creatures, some light burn, even a little bit of black if I want to go Rakdos to mix in there. And it looks like they're almost building the deck for us. It looks amazing. <laughs> but I see a card like this, and I have to ask myself the question, am I really running this over just another solid creature at the three spot? 
And yes, I get it. It's a may effect. I don't have to do it. I do it when it's to my benefit and I don't do it when it's not to my benefit. But when I do that, when I play this, I'm compromising the fact that I only have so many turns to get my damage across before my opponent's going to be able to have answers for my red aggro strategy. And if I take one of those turns to play this, maybe get a little more damage across here and there occasionally, but I do it at the expense of my board state, or I just play the creature that's still going to get damage across and it's not going to start to take away from my board state. That's the ultimate question. I don't see myself going with this over a creature. In Limited, I kind of had the same problem with this card even. Limited especially, it's all about creatures crashing into each other 99% of the time. I don't want to compromise my board state. And yes, it's a May effect, but I find myself maybe putting it out instead of a creature just to sit on it for a number of turns. Occasionally, will it work out for you? Sure it will. You're going to be in those games where it's going to work. But then I got to ask myself, would I have won that game anyway? Probably. <laughs> so, I don't know. I really don't like this card too much. It's a rare, but I just don't feel good about it. Next we have Magma Spray. Now here's a card I do feel good about. This is a common. It's a red instant. It deals two damage to target creature. If that creature would die, this turn exile it instead. So very nice light burn spell. It's going to definitely get some standard play. It doesn't hit players, but instant speed, it can take care of creatures, and it also can mess around with the embalm effect a little bit by exiling creatures periodically so they can't come back to haunt you. I like that a lot in this set particularly. So yeah, definitely feel like this is a card I'd be happy to run in some standard decks. Maybe it goes into that red aggro deck, and it's also really, really good for you in limited. All right, let's look at two red cards that are pretty cheap that could benefit from that previous card because they both have prowess. We have Nimble Blade Kenra and Soul Scar Mage. Now, the first ones are red in one. It's a common Jekyll Warrior 1 3 with prowess, very simple. The second one costs one red, Human Wizard 1 2 with prowess. And if a source you control would deal non combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one minus one counters on that creature instead. Now, the first card, very simple card. I could see it getting a little bit of standard play in the right aggro deck as long as there's enough good instant sorceries or just any other non-creature spells to back it up. And if the build falls that way, very, very playable card. The second card, same story, but in some ways even better because it's a one drop. And that secondary ability is interesting because it gets around indestructible. And what do we know about this set so far? Gods are indestructible. <laughs> so this is perhaps a god killer in certain circumstances. I do find that actually very intriguing. I think both of these cards could see standard play in a hyper-aggressive red deck, especially that one drop. I think that's actually quite good. You know Prowess is going to allow it to get across for some damage early on, which red decks really, really need to do to be competitive. And also, these are great cards for you in Limited too, especially with an aggro build. All right, let's look at a couple green cards that are some artifact hosers. <laughs> we have Dissenters, Deliverance, and Manglehorn. Now, the first one costs a green and one. It's an instant. This is common. Destroy target artifact, and you can cycle it for a green. Manglehorn, green and two. It's a beast, uncommon, two, two. When this enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact. Artifacts, your opponent's control. Enter the battlefield tapped. Now, this is pretty typical when Wizards moves into a new block. They try to put some cards in there that are going to dilute the power of the previous block to encourage the new cards to flourish a little bit. These are some much needed ways to control artifacts, right, in this new set. That first one is actually main deckable. I mean, Dissenters, Deliverance, there could be an argument made that if there's enough Marty Vehicles decks out there when the meta shifts, that I could just main deck this thing, and if I'm not up against a deck that has artifacts I'm concerned about, I just cycle it. And really, it mitigates any harm of having it in the deck. The second one, probably more of a sideboard card for sure. The first one, probably usually a sideboard card too, but you could make the argument, again, that you might just want it in certain metas in your main deck. Both these cards, even though they're sideboard cards, could impact standard, definitely if those Kaladesh cards are still hanging around in force, which they probably will be. And secondly, in limited, they're not going to be as good. They're going to be sideboard cards again, and every once in a while you'll have a problematic artifact that you'll want to side one of these in to deal with, but there aren't too, too many artifacts we've seen so far. It's good to have them, though, in case you need them. Next we have a green rare, Champion of Ronas. A green and three, check a warrior, three, three. You may exert this as it attacks. When you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. <laughs> 
pretty simple and straightforward, but wow. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Elvish Piper, but this card just seems super pushed. Like, this is insane. It's not the most broken card I've ever seen, granted, but at the same time, could you imagine just attacking with this, like, on turn five and throwing down, like, Willamog or something like that in standard? Like, that could be nuts. You could maybe work this into the Marvel deck and just use it as another way to get the creatures out. This feels really, really good to me, and it's hard to say exactly how good until you see it actually working. Yeah, it can get destroyed being three toughness, maybe before it gets to attack some of the time. Players are going to definitely need to hold on to removal for this card and decks that are running it, no doubt. It could simply win a game if a player untaps with this on their side <laughs> under certain circumstances. So this is definitely going to be one to keep a really close eye on. As far as other formats go, I think it might be a little too slow for Modern, believe it or not, just because it costs four and has the three toughness. So I think by the time it comes online, again, assuming your opponent expects it there based on your deck list, it's going to be waiting to get removed with Lightning Bolt or something like that. It's just a little too slow there, but for standard, this thing could be a powerhouse. It's also going to be really, really good for you and limited too, allowing you to play a free creature occasionally. All right, next we have Bounty of the Luxa, a blue, a green, and two enchantment rare. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all flood counters from Bounty of the Luxa. If no counters were removed this way, put a flood counter on Bounty of the Luxa and draw a card. Otherwise, add a blue, a green, and a colorless to your mana pool. So the idea is every other turn, you're either getting the three mana or you're drawing a card. The biggest issue for me with this card, though, is the fact that it costs four, and when it enters the battlefield, it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> now, there are some decks that might like this effect, because I do like the fact that it is card draw at least every other turn, and then the turns it's not card draw does allow you to perhaps get a couple of cards out of your hand due to the fact that you're getting the extra mana. That's kind of cool, but it just feels kind of clunky to me. Like, it just feels like it's moving way too slow, and you're looking at turn five minimally before you get any sort of advantage out of this card, and it's probably more realistically turn six or seven, and at that point, do you even need the extra mana? And the card draw is still nice, but there's other ways to draw cards that are probably a lot simpler. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm not feeling this one. I do feel like it could find a home in some commander decks because it does some interesting things with the ramp and the extra card draw. You could play this in conjunction with maybe some other card draw spells and kind of go that route. That would make sense to me. I also see it as possibly being in some limited decks. Like, it's not for every limited deck, but again, if you have a higher curve in your deck and you don't have any other decent card draw, this could be a okay option, even though, again, it's going to hurt to do nothing on turn four when you play this card. But some decks can look past that because they do have some higher curve stuff that's going to be really good for them. So, I don't know, that's my thought on it. Unless, again, we see some more cards that complement this a little better. I don't really see it in standard, but it could be okay in some limited decks. Definitely cool for Commander, I think. Having said that, those are the cards for today. So the plan is tomorrow, if we get any more big spoilers this evening or tomorrow morning, in the morning I will do another spoiler video and then I'll do the Market Watch on Sunday. If that doesn't happen though, I'll do the Market Watch on Saturday as normal. So stay tuned for that. We'll kind of see how that unfolds. But regardless, this weekend I definitely want to do an edition of the Market Watch. Quickly before I go, I just want to say thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and anybody who made purchases through the links on the Amazon Affiliate Store. It goes a really long way. Like I mentioned in the last couple videos, it's been a tough week with the YouTube ad boycott. I've lost four-fifths of my ad revenue this week, <laughs> which is making this very difficult. But really, without the patrons or the Amazon purchases, I really don't know what I would do. So thank you to everyone who's engaged in that. And if you want more information on those two things to help support the channel, check out that description below. Until next time, hey, if you're on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. If you're watching this on VidMe, please remember to upvote and follow. And have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.